beat that game, then I cut her off. Child who, yeah, he a fraud. We can spark it out. F in the size of a missile, he ran up for blowing his organs out. Thought we was bluffing, he ran up the news, gonna have to report him now. So just stay in your lane now. I'ma have chocolate come and make you a stain now. Should it be water with 30s and beans now? All when the beef turned up, y'all cry for help, we bought equipment Running to a hop with habit, we're going all attention You hit birds all in his legs and you was right behind him When I catch you, I'ma show you how to pipe somebody Like somebody You went so soon when your homie got body Game time, walking down like I'm Brian Brian Pound blast, now you trending on that time I'm We been spending since my man died No cap, that's a fact, we gon' get him back All black, we attack, we got hella Turn the city up ever since Zoo died. Every time we drop a up, we do the cha cha slide. His head was in his lap, his eyes was rolling down the street. He tried to run, he heard that click clack. He wasn't fast enough on his feet. You hear that sound, when it's that track hawk, that's not a regular G. You no, know, at the end of the day, when it's shut and done, who's standing up? I can't argue with you, keep getting plucked off. Help your man get up. I'm from the trenches where it ain't no hold back. I can't be going to war with no ghosts. You make candles when you broke, I smoke that. Shim and Sil were two brothers who fought like brothers and loved each other like brothers. Shim, or Chai Glizzy, as the public knows him, only put out two songs when he was alive. Actually, he was featured in one, and the second one wasn't even finished or released when he died, but he was well known in the city for other reasons. So, how did this seemingly ordinary dude from uptown Philadelphia become what I would argue is the most dissed person in Philly history? How did he become the most searched person on the Philly Reddit? How did his name become synonymous with drill and street culture without even being a rapper? Nor is he even around in 2021 when drill music had its peak in Philly. To find out, we're gonna look at who Rasheen Rockwell or Chai Glizzy is and who he bumped heads with along his journey within Philly to try and get an answer to the question of why his name is so well known and why he was dissed and disrespected so much by so many people over the last three years since his passing. Before we get into that, I want to take 20 seconds to tell you about my channel memberships. Channel memberships give you access and privileges that aren't available to everyone. When you sign up as a member for as little as $2.99, you will get access to member-only videos like my most recent video about Tasker Street members getting 20 years. In addition, some videos will be released for members two days before the public release. Also, you get a guaranteed response when you leave comments. Enough self-promotion, let's get to what you guys really are here for. The story of the man, the myth, the legend, Sheen, or as you're familiar with him, Chai Glizzy. Alright, they call me Sil. Sil and if Mills. I don't really real, but oh Come on, come on. <laughs> come on. Alright, real rap battle, bro. Right there. If you get on my face, I'm gonna beat your fuck. Yo, you was wrong. Yo, you was wrong. Yo, come on. Alright, uh, hey. <laughs> Alright, come on. Alright, come on. Alright, 
Come on. <laughs> come on, come on. I'm in the block. <laughs> <laughs> come on, get Sonic. <laughs> All right. Sit bar. All right. All right. They call me Young Sil. Sil. With no picks. Picks. I don't really care. Care. Cause I got a stick. Stick. And smack in the face. Yeah, with my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Check, check, I said, run it back, run it back, I said, it's your boy Sheen, I ride in between, got my man still right behind me, yeah, we ride to the lean, I, I said, check, I said, you know where I'm from, I'm from the sign up, throw your signs up, I said, check, check, I said, Sil, what I say, what I say, what I say, what I say, I said, I'll ride from the gate, no, nah, I know my ways. Okay. So today, we're diving into a Philly beef that's had, and still has, the streets buzzing. A clash that made rappers all across the city take sides. The main players here are Trap Street Sadi of Zoo Gang, repping North Philly. Zoo Gang's no simple crew is spread all over North Philly, and things get intricate. We've also got Chai Glizzy and his brother, NLB Sill holding it down with NLB slash 7200 in Uptown. NLB has ties with Richard Island and the Black Flag and blocks all across Uptown. Richard Island and the Black Flags are also from North Philly and both are entrenched in bloody wars with Zoo Gang. They are like mortal enemies. And then we got the wild card, Leaf Ward, a talented rapper holding it down, originally from West Philly around 52nd and Larchwood Ave. They call it Five Land, named after a fallen member. Five Land is locked in with the 44th Street Projects, PMB, and Tasker Street. The tensions in this story are real, and it had the whole city watching. Take it back to 2014, a time when these guys were still under the radar. When it comes to Chai, he had his brother Sill by his side. Chai and Sill went to Penny Pack. His mom died during his adolescence. I'm not exactly sure the date on that. Not sure where his father was either. I was told, but I'm not positive, that dad wasn't around and that the grandparents raised him and so. Someone could correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. After Chai passed, so posted on Instagram, I had your ass blocked for a month, dog. We beefed so hard, bro. Right now, I'm 100% sober. This shit from the heart. You and my big brother, dad, and protector. My everything, bro. When mommy died, I lost my heart. Now I feel like I lost control, bro. You let me down, bro. These niggas was terrified of you and it shows. And we got the same blood. We slept in the same bed. We had two different rooms and you always wanted to bring the fan in when I had the AC on. I hated that cracking the fuck up. Had me sick like a dickhead. Cracking the fuck up. I remember we tried to jump a nigga in sixth grade. We were like seven or eight. He whooped our ass, and I remember everything, bro. We know the price for this shit. Everybody gotta pay someday, but damn, I know you would kill the world for me. You know I feel the same. Love you. Any other details about his family are pretty hush-hush. What we do know is that he spent most his time in West Oak Lane in Mount Airy on Rugby Street near 72nd and Ogon. Chai's school days had him at King High before going to Delaware Valley Charter High School. It's like a glimpse into the past before they became the name on everyone's lips. And Delaware Valley Charter is where we will begin our story. Police have identified Rasheem Rockwell as a 17-year-old who turned himself in after Friday's Philadelphia school shooting. Rockwell was charged as an adult with aggravated assault. Bail has been set at $500,000. Some of his neighbors say the charge may be too harsh. It's a child and it's just a whole sad situation on both ends. It's scary, but I don't know him. The shooting happened Friday afternoon inside the gym at Delaware Valley Charter High School. Two students were hospitalized with gunshot wounds, but their injuries were not life-threatening. News now on Fox News Channel. This coming to, to us from Philadelphia where police tell our local station there has been a shooting there, and that shooting has happened at Delaware Valley Charter High School. Two shot, one male, one female, shot in the gym at the school. 
Gunshots hit a 15-year-old boy and girl in the gymnasium of the Delaware Valley Charter High School in Philadelphia. Their injuries are not life-threatening. The school immediately went into lockdown. We were just in the bathroom and our friend, she just came in the bathroom saying that her arm, her arm, and it just was a lot of blood gushing out. And she just was saying she heard a loud boom in the gym room. And when she looked up, her and her boyfriend's arm had been hit. A boy was taken into custody but later cleared. A second student turned himself in and a third was still being sought by police. Some reports suggest the shooting may have been an accident. Dante Walker, 18, faced charges related to weapons offenses and conspiracy following a January 17, 2014 incident at Delaware Valley Charter High School where two students were wounded by gunfire. Allegedly, additional video footage reveals a transaction involving a black handgun exchanged for cash, with Walker identified as the former student involved as the seller of the gun. Rashid Jarman was the alleged purchaser, who then passed the gun to Ja in the gym. Investigators suggest Walker concealed the weapon, entering the school without passing metal detectors. The motive appears to be a planned assault on Cha after school. The injured students were treated and released from Albert Einstein Medical Center. Walker, who had returned as a guest speaker, signed in, spoke with classes, and left, and later returned with the gun through an unlocked door. The school was previously trusting with its guests. It has now re-implemented searches for guests. The charter school has nearly 600 to 700 students from across the city. Chai had apparently been jumped the day before on his way home from school. Security footage from inside the gym shows Chai pulling the handgun from his book bag and it accidentally going off. Chai took a guilty plea and was sentenced to two years in juvie. No Chai got sent to Glenn Mills for a period of time because there are articles of him playing football for them in 2015. Glenn Mills was closed in 2019 after all of the abuse that was going on there came to light. Hundreds of boys came forward telling their stories of getting hit, kicked, spit on, slammed, and much, much worse. It had been going on for 40 plus years, and after the inquirer did a story, finally city officials stepped in and closed it down. They are facing a class action lawsuit at the moment. After graduating from that environment, it was back to the streets for a 19-year-old Cha Glizzy. The whole reason Cha even jumped into this beef was to be front line for his circle of friends. Cha was a hothead sometimes, so he ended up getting in a lot of fights uptown. Plus, Cha always dressed fly and got the girls. So the girls would fight over him and the dudes would get jealous. Cha was the type of dude who was always overprotective of his little brother, Sil, and would often get in fights for Sil, and vice versa. But Chai was big bro, so he usually was the one Sil went to get if something happened. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying at all that Sil is the reason Chai hopped in this. Uptown and North Philly all kinda hopped into this off of the arguments of maybe two or three people. As a matter of fact, it was another boy, Bari, who really got Cha pulled into the Uptown versus North Philly beef. Samir Fortune, who was called Saudi, always wanted to rap. The high school senior loved listening to Meek Mill and that led him to try writing hip hop music himself. When Samir first started out, Mom Dukes was skeptical. That soon changed after she actually heard him rap. I'm already a legend and ain't nobody with me, man. I do this for squat. Man, I do this for my. If a take my life, I swear to God he gon' die. I know Cav gon' 
side. I know Rock going side. I know he ain't going side and let them choppers go back. Trap Street Siding, man. Somebody Trap Street Siding. Every day I'm rolling with my niggas. Rolling, rolling. Every day. 18 from Cumberland. No Philly. Every day a nigga gotta get it. Every day I'm rolling. It's crazy, man. Shit. Shit, like growing up in Philly, period. Crazy. The trenches down there. That's all I'm busy. Every day a nigga. Everyone around him told him how talented he, they felt he was, and so at 17, he decided to start going and taking his rap seriously. Under the stage name Trap Street Sadi, Samir began releasing music that went viral in the underground mixtape world, including one called Maji World Part 1, which features six songs. Hip-hop fans across Philly and beyond took notice, and he developed a deep underground following. I didn't believe him at first, his mom said. He'd be like, Mom, listen to this song. And I'd be like, okay, Sadie, I'll listen to it. When I actually listened to it, I thought, he's got a nice voice on him. And when you listen to the words, he was telling the truth. He was telling what's on his mind, and he wouldn't sugarcoat anything. Samir asked for Mom Dukes to buy him some studio time so he could record his music, and she agreed. I felt as though I needed to get him studio time to get him occupied to keep him from getting in trouble. He knew I always wanted the best for him, his mom said. Whatever I could do to keep my son on the right track, I was going to do it, she said. But within a few months of releasing his mixtape, Samir's life was cut short. On the night of February 9th, 2017, he was home alone and sitting on the couch in his family's West Oak Lane house when bullets tore through the front window. A few days after his murder, Samir's idol, Meek Mill, who was from Burke Streets in North Philly, gave him a shout out during a concert, which is something Sadi would have loved. He was 18 years old and had so much life ahead of him, his mom said. He wanted to become someone, and I'm now the voice for Samir. Samir was born October 6, 1998, and raised at 18 from Cumberland in North Philly. He had an older sister who was now 22. In addition to music, Samir also loved football. He played for the North Philly Hurricanes as well as the Aztecs, and he even attended the Sean Jackson's youth football camp when he was younger. There was a street side to Sadi as well. His raps will often reflect how he felt about his life in the hood, how getting out was imperative. His goal was to be a famous rapper by the time he was 21. As I said, Sadi was from North and Chai was from Uptown. So the connection here is a Constitution basketball game that Mir Gotti was playing in. Word is, a fight broke out between Chai, Bari, and some other people from Uptown. Sadi was with some of his people, including Team Low and a bunch of other people from North. North Philly, known as TNN at the time, got the better that day. Now that you gotta understand at the time, North Philly had this image of Uptown, which was, you know, Uptown was sweet and they really wasn't doing nothing, wasn't nobody active up there. And Uptown always had a chip on their shoulder, like they had to prove themselves. And that's that's where a lot of the tension came from. Um, you see it all the time between Uptown people and people from North Philly, it's, it's always, it's always a little tension there. People from uptown got a chip on their shoulder, you know what I mean? So some of that stems from that.
Also breaking, an 18-year-old man was shot and killed while sitting inside his house. It happened on the 6700 block of North 15th Street in the West Oak Lane section at 1145 last night. Police say the gunman fired 13 shots through the windows and the front door. The victim ran to a neighbor's house and then collapsed. Police rushed him to the hospital where the young man died. Police say that victim was under house arrest. Saudi died on February 7, 2017. After Saudi's death, a line was drawn in the sand. Saudi was cool with people from all over the city, from South Philly and Tifi Bay, who has a lot of say on the streets, all the way to Uptown to PNB Rock, who was one of the city's biggest stars at the time. Meek Mill had Poundside Pop and Saudi's back at the time. He even mentioned Saudi's passing at one of his shows. Saudi had major connections throughout the city. After his passing, rumors began to swirl about who the hitmen were that night. What we know for certain is that Zoo Gang blamed Chai and his people from Uptown. Chai and his people from Uptown did not deny it. In fact, they definitely claimed it. Walking down like I'm Brian Brian. You gonna see that nigga scrolling on your timeline. Yeah, hey, so by gang in this history, he disrespect me your memory, put in the coffin. I thought he was walking down like Brian Brian. None of my niggas on the timeline. I keep a 40, I start through your block and I had niggas run like, like a combine. You went so soon, your homie got body. Ain't the same when one of us get hit up with pop bottles. The streets confirmed what we already knew when bodies from both sides started to drop. Apparently, a lot of things went into motion after the passing of Saudi. Trap Street and Zoo Gang members were moving fast and recklessly for Saudi, as his death was a big deal for the neighborhood. People took the news hard. Members took vengeance into their own hands. Almost everyone who was accused of being there the night Saudi was killed has been targeted, either shot at or killed. Saudi was the first in this back and forth, but he definitely wouldn't be the last. Philadelphia police are trying to find the gunman who shot a man in Albany. Philadelphia's first judicial district started the live streaming of his first homicide trial in 2020 for its case against Zakeem Brown, who was charged with the murder in the 2019 shooting death of Marquise Chandler or Kesey from Albany. Kesey and Cha were cool, and in fact, in 2018, allegedly, Cha shot at Zine. Kesey was a supposed driver on that attempted drill. Kesey was allegedly killed by Zine in retaliation. On a Thursday night in 2019, 24-year-old Marquise Chandler was fatally shot four times in Olney on West Welland Street. The incident occurred just before 6.15 p.m. and Kesey was transported to Einstein Medical Center where he was pronounced dead at 6.29 p.m. In the petition filed by the DA, which directly asked the court to intervene because of the extraordinary circumstances, the district attorney argues if a recording was made, it could re-traumatize victims, dissuade witnesses from cooperating or testifying, or create a permanent video record, even for those who were found not guilty. Back in 2020, the city was going to go ahead and live stream trials on YouTube, starting with this trial. This decision drew major criticism from defense attorneys, activists, and the DA even agreed. His petition was eventually granted and the courts nixed the idea of live streaming trials over the internet. On June 7th, 2018, 
officers responding to a call for a shooting on a 3100 block of Custer Street at about 6.20 p.m. found Ja Lil Mitchell with multiple bullet wounds to the torso in a store on a 3000 block of Potter Street. Police took him to Temple University Hospital, but Mitchell of the 3200 block of Potter Street was pronounced dead at 7.29 p.m. A preliminary investigation indicated that Mitchell was shot on the corner of Custer and Clearfield and ran to the store before collapsing, police said. Based on witness and video, police said they were looking for one gunman in the shooting. That gunman was later found and revealed to be NLB Zai, who is currently serving time for this murder. Jalo Mitchell, or Poppy, is not in this beef, and the story goes he was shot by an NLB crash out who saw someone with a Saudi world hoodie and let him pass on the street. He ended up coming up from behind Ja and shot him. We, Brandon Vincent or BV, and many others would die or get shot at between 2017 when Saudi died and 2020 when Cha was killed. This was around the point in time in 2017, 2018, and 2019 when the songs and social media were really starting to add an extra layer of instigation to the already emotion-led beefs. Cute your homie and you ran. Now we spin it back, cause that wasn't part of the plan. We got them choppers, we stay with 50. Do the dash in the law, cause you know we feel we got a check on my head, but I be for rookie. In my best to the left, and she rolling cookies. We catch them in traffic, you know they freeze. Got them choppers with titties, them double D's. And stuck buses up, ain't no copping, please. Get back for the drop, got what I need. It's up there. <laughs> Y'all know I'm still up. Keep talking about bodies. I put the zoo on the map. Facts. I put my gang on my back. Facts. No child in power and rats. I put the zoo on the map. After NLB started taking credit for the death of Saudi and rapping about it heavy, they basically put a target on their back as long as they live. Forever solid, my nigga, forever, honey. And they took Saudi out the game, so I'm forever on it. Who did it should be forever work And every time we get the drive No we gon' spend up on them And ain't no shooting from a far no way A lot of this back and forth Happened over the Instagram and Twitter A lot of the stories and posts Dissing each other haven't been archived But there is music from both sides From around 2018 and 2019 With NLB and Zoo Gang Going back and forth So probably could have chilled and might not have been a bigger target if he never really said anything. Then again, maybe not, because these young boys don't care anymore. Because even though Sil wasn't there the night Sadi was killed, his brother allegedly was. And when people are hurting, it seems like your whole family is fair game these days. The night Sadi was killed, I can only confirm that Cha and BV's white van was there. This made anyone who even mentioned Saudi disrespectfully on the plate, according to Zoo Gang. NLB Sill was the most talented rapper from the bunch from NLB. When I say that I'm dead serious, Sill really could spit. But he was raw and unpolished. And them glocks, I'm like Bonnie and Clyde with her To the end, that's my bitch, I'ma ride with her Delivery truck for the butcher, come sliding And she get to me and I'm out with it Back with the junkies, you know that they vibe with me Mike Jack, they dance as soon as we drop And you bring the brakes to the trap, trying to flop with them We got a trouble, we plying My brother need a lawyer I told her that I got him, time to put the mask on And the loss I can't afford him You reach in your hook on my mind, you get tagged on I'm in the trap with bacon soda Put a whip to it, like pay the block to the crack Or just ask on, we finna slide or a stick up Boy, you a featherweight, ain't shit to get plucked I'm in the heaven gates, never did shit tough 40 don't segregate, rep it, get hit up they hesitate, then they get drenched up. Slime, we try to put niggas in ditches. Ain't none of my niggas like Lido. In other words, niggas ain't cool with them stitches. We try to hop out and delete one. And with the internet, that's what reporters for. They say it all, we don't tweet none. Pull up the video, seeing all the glizzies, and she see the drone. I need the best off like I'm raging. I feel like Elsa when I'm in the trenches. They know we keep stacks like Jim.
I'm sorry, I don't need a missus Count it out from the beginning And then we start winning I feel like the sixes He can talk, but I know he wanna tip me My trigger finger, it be itching Ain't with the scamming I'm more in the jacket And all my life, I've been a risker I watch the girl make it killer Not the kitchen I turn to a whipper Today, people like to bid on sale and a lot of that has to do with the aftermath of this beef and the constant dissing of his brother Chai. Zoo Gang is one of the more popular groups in the city with big rappers like Poundside Pop and OT7 Kwani. So that plays a lot into the hate that Sil gets. And also, Sil has been caught like two or three times on camera getting beat up with him getting rolled on by Zoo members on a couple occasions. Somehow there are like four or five interactions caught on camera between NLB and Zoo Gang. You got that fight at the Shelham Mall. You got Sil catching Diamond Street Keem down the boardwalk, but he didn't really do anything except for record him, which is a good thing actually. Not for his street credit though. It got worse for Sil when a camera caught Zoo strolling on Sill at the Red Terminal. Finish it, they finish it, but we gon' spank them cases cause we innocent. Hood the Louis V's, the Rammy 7 Timberlands. I push that button, watch my young and go collect them Benjamins. We treat his ass too comfortable when driving cause we be in case. If he a rat, I play him how I play him till I see the facts. We put all the pups under that pressure, see how he react. Chrome hard with crosses and we don't even believe it. Leaf Ward comes from West Philly, 52nd Street, around Osage or Larchwood. He's really born on 42nd Street, but moved to 52nd Street later in life. Leaf has been considered the best underground rapper by a lot of people for years now. The reason I said this beef had the streets divided is because it forced a lot of rappers to have to pick a side, even if they didn't want to or weren't directly involved in this beef. The whole reason Leaf even entered into this is because when it came time to pick a side, he rolled with Tasker Street, which was in opposition to NLB by proxy. He picked Tasker because he already had ties with some of them from school. Tasker Street had heavy beef with King Lord and 27th Street. King Lord, was cool with a dude named Shy Glizzy from Frankfurt. And after Glizzy lost his life, King Lord became closer with some of Glizzy's friends, like Shy and Tally. They both respected each other's hand and were similar in personalities. King Lord was cool with people from all across the city. If you weren't his enemy, he was a very likable guy. Same with Leaf Ward. Leaf Ward was also cool with P&B from Uptown. P&B and NLB never really got along. Sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't. Especially since P&B Rock and Sadi were tight. P&B Rock bailed Leaf Ward out of jail and that's why they became friends. How'd you link up with P&B Rock at first? Crazy, bro. That's my brother, bro, no bullshit. I got locked up, bro. I don't know if it was 2018 or 2017. I ain't knew him yet, bro. They came in, like, they came and got me out of jail, got me a defense, bro, brought me right home, bro. I'm like, I don't even know these. Like, what the f y'all want in return? You feel me? They ain't want nothing in return, bro. They said, just do you. Like, then that got deeper, you feel me? That got, that got deeper, you feel me? Deeper than rap. When Rock Bell Leaf out, it was a case of Rock looking out because he knew Leaf had potential and felt he was thorough. A lot of Leaf's clout and buzz is based on his undeniable ability as a rapper. However, the fact that he was in the middle of and rapping a lot, and I mean a lot, about two of the most talked about block wars in the city helped his buzz tremendously. As his buzz was taken off, Leaf ended up getting shot in his hand by a block unaffiliated with this story. But Chai took this opportunity to disleaf in his now infamous song, No Lack. 
So you know we not tripping, get them back I got shot in his hand, if I wasn't part of the plan And I wasn't making it back You want me, Lord, that's a fact Cause ain't no time frame for that Why you keep talking about gas, just rap Either way you turn to a pack, just ask I'm smoking zoo, we can match, no lack I just bitch on my ass, relax I just been chasing them racks, I'm back And I can still put on our blood I'm through 14 shots, only hit me once in my hand Them niggas was missing, they know they f***ed up They supposed to walk me down, they did Cause was Sleepy told me he got hit up in his hand That shit was like a niggas got the drop And could've walked down and took his life the actual intricacies I don't have, but that's just the gist of how Cha and Leaf Ward started sniping at each other. So, as the heat turns up and the dissing on social media continues, emotion from everyone were on go mode. Neither side thought to hit the brakes. On March 31st, 2020, King Lord was gunned down due to the South Philly beef I mentioned earlier. Cha and King Lord were tweeting at each other about Pilar the week before Lord died. The day he died, Cha sent his condolences. The switch, let this glick work. I'm a book first. Tell your folks, run a big hearse. Don't get tagged. If he make it through, he get a shit bag. Big bag. It's pop. I got him big man. On May 20th, 2020, Chai Glizzy and King Lord's close friend SB dropped the song Up the Score with Chai dissing Zoo Gang and Leaf Ward and SB dissing Leaf Ward and Tasker Street. Bye. Game time. Walking down like I'm Brian Brian. Pound blast. Now you trending on that time. He a camper. He Within two months of this video's release, both Cha and SB will be dead. Six days after the release of Up The Score, Cha posts on his Instagram a snippet of the yet to be released song, No Lack. Cha wasn't a rapper really, it was Sil who was the better rapper. But Cha had the actual rank in the street. See, in a year or two leading up to his demise, Cha will become somewhat of a hitman. He collected money on two different occasions to kill someone and completed the mission both times. Some people know, but most people don't realize that Chai was a little dangerous out here. I mean, he wasn't the toughest boy to ever walk the streets of Philly, but he was building up a formidable reputation for himself. But all that will come to an end as the expecting first time father was gunned down in West Philly on June 7th, 2020. A 25 year old man was shot and killed in the Mantua section of the city this afternoon. Chopper 3 over 39th and Brown around 1.30. Police say the victim was shot outside. There's no word on what led to the shooting. There have been no arrests. With at least three people on the drill that day, Cha was set up or someone saw him down there and called the people seen in the white car in the video. Head was in his lap, his eyes was rolling down the street. He tried to run, he heard that click clack. He wasn't fast enough on his feet, you heard that sound. A little over a month later, on July 16th, 2020, SB was killed in an unrelated incident in West Philly. The day Chai was killed, Poundside Pop posted Sadi, which anyone who pays attention to those things knows what that means. Also, Sadi's brother, Rache, would do his best King Von impersonation and tweet about the murders in the days following the incident. People in the streets already knew who Chai was, but the rest of the world was about to find out who he was because anyone and everyone who had a problem with Chai, Sil, or NLB was about to diss him from that day still to this day. 
Shout out to the zoo. Bro, you ain't the. Sure, yo, what's up, bro? Shout out to the zoo. I wanna be interviewed, bro. Bro, when you interview me, bro, don't ask me no vlog. You mean? Self incriminating shit, bro. Yo, don't start talking about Broski right now. Leave Broski out of it, bro. You know the answer to that question, bro. We ain't talking about Broski right now. That, you hear me? We on different vibes. We ain't speaking on them ass niggas. Them niggas got they shine. <laughs> hey, bro, child of a guy. Seriously, your brother, I'll go to his grave and take a look. Stand on business when they killed your brother with his chat. The wood got murdered, rock got murdered. Got murdered, got murdered. Got murdered. Got murdered. Got murdered. Smoking on child cause he ain't get up. Go, go, go. Duh. Go. Disrespect the Z, that shit gon' get you hit up. When a troll me and that's when a die. So got smacked up, child got wrapped up. Playing with them droppers that get you clapped up. Smoking child runs off my shot, I'm about to murder that. Hey, that child is a pet and he never comes back. Terrible. Hey, bro, child of a guy up. Uh, they got the Nino some cha cha I ain't be killing for free. Catch up, I'ma do my knee. Bro, you broke ass, that's for that. You ain't doing nothing, bro. You're dying. You know we got back to old bro, so get that shot. Smoking child runs, that that boy a has been. His name is disrespected. One day you gotta die. Set that roll his child runs up. That shit got me fried. Hey yo, no, go to Burger King or you hear me? Hey yo, chill! Leaf Ward, Pound Side Pop, PNB Rock, OT7 Kwani, 25th Street Bill, and even more recently, Lil Bucks have all taken shots of him, among many, 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 many others, on songs and on social media. That, coupled with the incessant posting about him on the Philly Wiki subreddit, he has become somewhat of a hood legend mythologized and synonymous with the dead being dissed in drill songs. It will be useless to go through every single song, video, and post that was said back and forth because in the end, it doesn't really matter. Hundreds of black men and teenagers are killed every single year in the city, and for what? It amounts to nothing. So many people have died or gone to jail behind this beef. It probably seemed like the biggest deal in the world at the time. A fight happens and blood is shed. Sometimes someone disrespects you or your gang on a song or on the gram. And it seems like the same story playing out over and over. These are some of the reasons all this violence happens over and over again. Lives are lost and people are hurt. You retaliate, we retaliate. It's a never ending cycle. Both NLB Sill and Leaf Ward, as of October 14th, 2023, are incarcerated on gun charges and are awaiting the outcomes of their cases. I mentioned Chow was an expecting father when he was killed. King Lord, SB, and Kesey, as far as I know, who were all mentioned in this video, are fathers as well. The gang wars affect a lot more than just the people involved. It affects the family and friends of the loved ones as well. The trauma and the damage it does are not fully known yet, but anyone who has been through losing a loved one knows it is a devastating and soul-crushing event. Rest in peace to all those mentioned in this video. Until next time, this has been American Confidential. Be safe. Yeah. Rest in peace, Sadie, and rest in peace, bro. I'm the only nigga that I'm trying to. I'm just my dog, yeah. I'm just my dog. Upgrading my life, none of these niggas saying.
popping, I see they hating. I came up from nothing, I picture my struggle, I seen all this shit. I'm just living in it. I pray for my fellas, we all in the trenches. Life ain't no joke, I just pray for some hope and I cherish my flow. And I tell all this thing that I'm fighting, wonder when it's gonna get better. 2014, when you said I was a realist in your letter. I wish I would have kept it in your secrets, I would keep them. How you let them do you like that, really, bro? I can't believe you still need time to grieve for me. I miss broke rest in peace. When I got that call from smooth, I ain't know what else to think. All them guns that we had, we was young, just living fast. Ain't really trying to be out here sad. You knew better, that's why it's another of a love. I guess God got a plan. Cause I know you knew better, that's why I don't understand. I still got we on my mind. They never thought it would be child. But we all got a date. Save me a spot for when I die. Your heart was bigger than your pride. I knew everything you stood for. Your route was made out. Ever since then we was low boys. I always wanted best for you. Some money and no stress for you. And here I can't be next to you. You never know, bro. You never know when just just up and leave you, you feel me? Like, it seemed like every time my, a mother be trying to get my attention, I ain't gonna say every time, but like, it's like the second time. Like, my young boy, Saudi, he was trying to get with me for a minute. Like, he kept trying to hit me up, kept trying to hit me up. Link up, link up, link up. That wasn't that I was ignoring him, but I was doing shit, I was busy. And I could have got back with him, you feel me? I just was always thinking like that he's still gonna be around like I could get back with him like tomorrow or maybe the next day maybe the next day you feel me but like shh. nobody you never know when you're gonna lose your focus you feel me like you never know in that split second what the happen so I'm just everybody man cherish your brothers cherish your friends cherish everybody bro you never know bro like shit to be real like the day my brother got killed nigga he was trying to chill me that whole day nigga he was he was trying to vibe with me, come out of New York, come to the studio, but I was on some nuts, I was on some weirdo shit. I'm like, bro, you, I was with you. Like, I'm going to see you later on the day, bro. Like, just on some nuts shit, you feel me? But just not knowing that I would never see my brother again, you feel me? It's just like, bro, I just want everybody, man. Cherish everybody that you with, everybody that's in your corner, you feel me? Like, you never know, bro. Like, this should be just, should be crazy, bro. I'm sick right now.